Now it's time for the main <laughs> event. This is what everybody came <laughs> for. Boomer Esiason took you, Mr. Hodge, to task on his radio show, the number one rated radio show in New York City, NYC, after your column about him and Chris Strevler from February 1st caught his and his co-hosts, Greg Giannotti's attention. They spent almost 10 minutes discussing the piece as Esiason called you a snowflake. His comments sparked a second column from you on February 10th, which garnered a lot of positive feedback, but also had some people calling it clickbait. But, hey, if you click on it, I guess you liked it, so you took the bait. How do you feel about this entire saga or saga potato potato between you and former NFL MVP Boomer Esiason, <laughs> who, oh, by the way, was on the panel for the Super Bowl on CBS, but he didn't mention you there. That would have been next level. <laughs> <laughs> this whole situation uh, is bizarre. It is entertaining. Uh, I will also say it is uncomfortable because one of the things that we are taught as reporters is to tell the story and not be the story. And I feel like with Boomer making this somewhat personal, it has like I have become part of the story, which is not my, what my intention was. And it's again, not something I'm terribly comfortable with, but I will speak on it. Let's start off with why I wrote the first column and the first column we've already talked about a little bit on the show. That's the one from February 1st, where essentially I, I asked Chris Treveller about the original commentary that Boomer Sias had provided during his NFL debut in 2021. And I had some people suggesting and this, and this is what upset Boomer that someone was asked a question about something from three years ago. Well, on the one hand, I get it. We're not in, in a, in a, you know, a, a market that's called olds. It's called news, right? We're supposed to talk things that are new and fresh. However, I never got the chance to ask Chris Traveler about that moment. And that moment remains one of the most big topic stories of interest in three down nation history. Yes, it is an article that did very well. And on the one hand, people could say, Oh, well, you know, writing about it, that, that's just clickbait. Well, my, my interpretation of clickbait, like the way that I would think of clickbait is an article that uses a piece of information out of context or purposefully, deceptively words the headline to promise something that the article does not provide. If your interpretation of clickbait is to say, well, any any story that someone might want to read is clickbait, I, I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> yes, I, I. part of the reason I asked about it was because people are interested. To me, that's being a good reporter. I'm reporting on something that people are interested in. I Obviously, people are interested in it. And I feel like I went about it in a responsible way. And Chris Treveller, by the way, could have said, oh, that's three years ago. I don't care about that. I'm here to talk about the bombers. And that would have been fine. Chris Treveller gave a very long answer to the question and spoke at great length about what it meant to be a CFL quarterback who went to the NFL and came back. And by the way, he is the only quarterback to do that in 20 years, to go to the NFL from the CFL and then return to the CFL. So he is the unique person on the planet to provide insight on what that might feel like. Now, as for Boomer's response, I get that it's a three-year-old comment. I get that. But what first ticked me off was the fact that we asked CBS for an interview at the time, and CBS said no. Now, Boomer indicated on his radio show that he wasn't made aware that a, a request had been made or he couldn't remember. One of his staffers suggested that it's possible that he wasn't even made aware of the request, and they just turned it down at CBS. And either of those things is fine. No one, right? We're not entitled to an interview with Boomer Esiason. If CBS said no, it's fine. But it ticks me off when somebody at the time avoids interviews and media scrutiny, but then years later starts talking about it when they're on their own terms on their own show and they aren't faced with the scrutiny of that situation. So that's why I felt obligated to write the second column. And I think that they made some great points, Boomer and Geo. I'm not discrediting anything that they said, except for the fact that they missed the entire crux of the story, which is something that, frankly, Boomer, as a former NFL quarterback of 
like 15 years, probably should have picked up on back in 2021 when Chris Trevler threw that interception, which is that a defensive player coming off the edge, I believe his name is Terrell Lewis, for the Los Angeles Rams, moved before the snap of the ball, and Chris Streveler thought that he had an offside penalty, which is why he floated the ball into the middle of the field, which, by the way, is something that Patrick Mahomes did in the Super Bowl. Nobody said that Patrick Mahomes floated the ball in the middle of the field, made him a lousy CFL quarterback who doesn't know anything. They gave him the benefit of the doubt because he's Patrick Mahomes. Obviously, Chris Streveler did not get the benefit of the doubt. And I'm not saying he's Patrick Mahomes. Chris Streveler himself would not say he's Patrick Mahomes. But the point is that Boomer latched onto the very first piece of information he had about Chris Streveler, which is that he played in the CFL and said, well, this is a CFL quarterback who's not good. And he's floating the ball in the middle of the field because CFL players, you can do that in the CFL because they're not as athletic as the NFL. And that's why he did it. When in fact, he did it because of the offside penalty that he thought was coming. And then on the radio show, him and his co-host sat there and read almost the entire column and left out the one quote from Streveler where he talked about the offside penalty and why he thought why, or why he threw the ball in the first place, which is because he thought he thought that his opponent had jumped offside. So that was the second reason why I was like, no, if he's addressing it, First of all, I want to write the column. But secondly, if he is actually not going to address the one part of the article that is, in is in my view, the most important, which he missed back in 2021 and is now either chosen purposely to overlook now, in which case, shame on you for cherry picking quotes, or they have done a once over of the column and they happen to miss it. In which case, okay, now you're being sloppy and you're not being responsible by reading the entire thing carefully before addressing it on air. So those are the two reasons why I wrote the second column. And by the way, both of these columns have done exceptionally well. Some people might call it clickbait to write articles that you suspect people will be interested in, but nobody gets mad at Apple when they make an iPhone that people want to buy or McDonald's when they make a burger that everybody wants to eat. At Three Down Nation, bro. Don't we, want me in that group. I, I didn't suggest that you did. You said I'm everybody. talking about the average. Uh, the, uh, when, the, when the public at large when is interested in a Hey. With, yeah, when they when they make a flavorless tofu quinoa bowl, Justin will will be all over that McDonald's drive through. Uh, but what I was going to say is, for some reason, when you write an article about a topic that people are really interested in, it gets called clickbait. I don't really know why. Again, if I had re reported on this story irresponsibly or had a deceptive headline or taken a quote out of context, by all means, call me clickbait. But in my view, this was a topic that people were interested in, and and. And the, the other thing I will say, Boomer seemed to be upset that we're talking about this three years after the fact. Then why did he talk about it for almost 10 minutes on his show? If, <laughs> yeah. if, if this is an irrelevant topic, then you go, oh, somebody in Canada wrote a call about the – well, that's weird. That's old. Anyways, let's focus on today's NFL news. That's how that conversation would have gone in New York when they were planning the show. Instead, they talked about it for 10 minutes. So that other argument of you shouldn't be reporting on things that were said three years ago, well, they talked about it for 10 minutes three years later. So I, 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 I don't think that's viable. But anyways, that's my thought process. I wanted to clear the air, address it with our listeners, share. And by the way, 3 Down Nation, again, while reporting responsibly, we'll continue to write articles that people want to read because – that that that's our job. That's literally our report on things that people are interested in. We'll continue to do that. It's maybe the most amusing thing that has happened in the history of this website. <laughs> and as the person who wasn't in the crosshairs of the number one radio show in New York City, I was just loving every second of it, Hodge. I laughed so hard when I saw that clip. I was in tears and I love the fact that they couldn't even figure out how to pronounce your very basic name. Oh, Hodge, they said it right Hodge. at the start. And they, they said, said it right Hodge, like five times. Hoge, Hoge. Wow. We need to get them to say Hodge, Hodge. <laughs> Cause dumb Americans I'm sure would very much believe that every Canadian name should be pronounced like it's in French, but I love the fact that I got to sit at the Super Bowl with my girl and point at the screen and say, hey, look, 
It's the guy who called Hodge a snowflake. And we got to have another <laughs> laugh. It was amazing. Every single part of it. But Boomer's comments, I think, are reductionist. They are arrogant. And they are indicative of everything that people who don't watch the CFL, and I won't just single out Americans, although it's a lot of Americans, but also some Canadians too, think about the league. And it's just not true. Are there fantastic NFL players who are far and away better than anything that the CFL has? Yes, there are you know, three or four freaks on every single team that are just unbelievable athletes in their own right. They are better than almost everyone in the NFL, too. That's just what they are. But the bulk of any NFL roster and the bulk of any CFL roster is mostly determined by circumstance and system and 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 opportunity, right? And a lot of those players, anyone who's played in both leagues will tell you are incredibly similar. And it's not always the cream of the crop that rises and gets their NFL opportunity. There are a lot of factors that play into it. So this idea that Boomer you know, hung his hat on that CFL athletes are just inferior to NFL athletes is patently incorrect at a systemic level, like a whole level. Are there better NFL athletes? Yes. But for the most part, football players are football players. And there are some tremendous athletes in Canada that should be in the NFL and aren't because of whatever situation. And Boomer back in the day got his butt beat by a number of CFL players like Warren Moon and others. So I hate those type of comments from anyone, but I love that he stuck our name out there like that and made himself look like an idiot in the process. The major issue that I have with Boomer when he's talking about our colleague, John Hodge, and even the website overall is just his arrogance. Like Mm. what he was saying under his breath, he swore, he's name calling. Like, you know, I understand this is entertainment, but you know, have the guy on the show. I think even as uncomfortable as Mr. Hodge is, he would go on the show to provide this ulterior perspective for a couple of important reasons. In Any football league in the world that has a forward pass is not smart to throw the football down the middle of the field. So when that is the comment that you are basing your commentary on and still trying to defend on your number one rated New York radio show, it doesn't make any sense. I don't care if it's Pop Warner or if it's Canadian University football, CFL, NFL, NCAA, UFL, USFL, whatever freaking league it is, XFL, UFL. You don't just throw the ball up down the middle of the field and hope for success. That is not a recipe for wins in the CFL. And the other thing that I can't comprehend is Boomer Esiason is clearly a proud American. Chris Strevler is an American who happened to play in the CFL. Like half of the CFL is American players, a decent amount of them from big time colleges that, as JC said, for different circumstances just have not made it in the NFL. There's only 32 teams in the NFL. So I think his misunderstanding here of the quality of talent, as Hodge pointed out so well in his column when he was inducted into the Cincinnati Bengals ring of fame with Chad Johnson standing right beside him, Chad Johnson has gone on the record multiple times and made waves in the United States talking about his time in the CFL and saying that the talent was way better than he anticipated. So full credit to Mr. Johnson for being able to have the perspective and admit that he was wrong about the talent. And I would like Boomer Esiason to do that as well, because there were some hardcore CFL fans that went out there and found Boomer Esiason stats from his first CFL start excuse me, NFL start. I'd like to see him start in the CFL back in the day. And Chris Traveler's first NFL start. They were virtually similar. Their quarterback ratings over their careers in the NFL, obviously varying lengths and much different. I believe Traveler's was better. So I would just like him to have a little bit of perspective and lose that arrogance. I understand how you can build that ego up. Being a former NFL MVP, we respect what he's done in the NFL and what he's done as a commentator in his post-playing career. But have a little respect 
when you're talking about a league that you might not know about and do some research because you can't just throw the ball down the middle of the field in the CFL and win great cups. Well, and one last thing I'll say is I've seen a little bit of pushback from people saying, well, Boomer's not right, but you know, Chris Treveller is a really lousy passer. Like, can we just acknowledge that he's really bad at throwing the ball? And it's like, well, I, I don't think that's true necessarily. I do think it's fair to say that Chris Treveller is much more of a threat with his legs than with his arm. But the point is not that Chris Treveller is, is, is a dominant passer, is not a dominant passer, whatever. It's the fact that he made one mistake in his NFL debut which, again, was arguably not even a mistake because, correctly, he asserted that somebody had jumped offside, though there was no penalty called. And the very first opportunity that people were given to slam him and just call him a CFL player and imply that he's well out of his depth and that, you know, this league is, you know, so Bush league that no one could possibly, you know, from that league could come down to the NFL and, and have success. They, they immediately took that first opportunity to very conveniently just write him off. And Chris Traveler, by the way, has a touchdown to interception ratio of one to one in the CFL, has started nine games and is three and six. Like he is not the best of the best that the CFL has to offer. But that doesn't matter, right, to the NFL or its commentators. It's just, well, he's a substandard player because he went, you know, he played in the CFL. And the athletes are not very good up there. And uh, so we can just dismiss him and write him off using the same, you know, very generic excuses that we always do. And uh, so that that's what set me off a little bit. That and, of course, you know, the, the original interview being declined and then, of course, not addressing the the one most important quote, I think, from Streveler where he was talking about how the interception came about. But and he called anyways, him a snowflake. How do you feel about that? Well, he called it in fair. He, he did say. Uh, it, so the way the interview worked, and, and the whole thing is linked, by the way, in the article, if you want to go and listen to it. But essentially, the way it came about was his co-host said, so they, you know, Canada's mad at you because this Chris Treveller thing came up and uh, a reporter asked about it. And Boomer said, which snowflake asked that question? So then it came out that it was a Three Down Nation article and the reporter was John Hodge slash Hodge. Um so he, he didn't necessarily say, like, well, that person is a snowflake. But, yeah, he did kind of call me a snowflake, which, I, whatever. I, I don't know. It. I, I, I'm from Manitoba. I like the snow. I'll be a snowflake. I don't care. <laughs> well, I'm glad Dunk brought up Mr. Johnson, as he so eloquently put it, because Mr. Johnson is an excellent euphemism for what I would like to call boomer instead of snowflake. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Uh, could be the last of this or it might not. We'll see if uh, Boomer and Geo decide to respond or have you on the show. I think that would be the best thing. You could teach them a for, little bit. Boomer could give his for clarity, perspective. Uh, just, just for full transparency, I've not heard anything from the show whatsoever. And I'm unaware if they have responded to my column, which uh, the most recent one which came out on the 10th. I also suspect that it would have got completely lost in the shuffle for them at Super Bowl, which ultimately may maybe that's also a, a bit of a crime in this is that this happened during the most busy week of the NFL calendar and also arguably the CFL calendar with free agency being such a hot topic, uh, which is, again, part of the reason I feel odd talking about this. But I would happily go on their show. Um, I have no personal animosity to Boomer Esiason. Um, I don't have a positive or negative opinion of him. I, I'm just bothered by what his comments represent. And also the reporter in me is bothered that, again, the original interview request was denied. And then they're talking about this years later. And again, they're cherry picking the quotes from Chris Trevler. If anything, I think Chris Trevler has the right to be upset, but I can't speak on Chris Trevler's behalf.